Hello, this is Marlene Dinarius here from Latinum. Just a reminder, you can find Latinum at Patreon if you would like to support this channel. On the cliffs, or what we call nowadays clefs, we're looking at Hawkins, an inquiry into the nature and principles of thorough base on a new plan, London 1817. When the mode of determining the names, relations, and tones of notes by the use of a stave containing a certain number of lines had been first thought of, the necessity was evident that those lines should be as few as possible. In order to prevent confusion or mistake in consequence of their similarity. A stave, for instance, which would have comprehended two octaves, the usual natural compass of the voice, would evidently have been too complex, because not fewer than eight lines would have been necessary, and these could not readily have been counted by the eye in the performance. It seems, therefore, to have been determined originally to confine, to confine the stave to one octave, and accordingly, in the 13th century, the lines of the stave were limited to four, which, with the three spaces between them, were evidently sufficient to contain the seven different notes. For, as to the octave or eighth, it was, and is, only a repetition of the first. The stave, thus limited in compass, was, however, obviously not calculated to show the different pitch of the notes, whether they were to be considered as taken from the first, second, or third octave above the lowest note G in the scale of Guido d'Arezzo, and it was therefore plainly ascertained that an additional key or guide was wanting or lacking in our modern English in order to fix by a mark. The pitch of some one note, and so, by consequence, to settle or determine that of all the rest. And this has since been effected by the introduction of the cliffs. The invention of these has been usually, though apparently erroneously, attributed to Guido of Arezzo, who lived about the year 1020. From his writings, now extant, it does not appear that he used anything more than lines of different colours to ascertain the third and sixth notes, C and F. And he does not seem to have considered the lowest note, G, the lowest sung note, that is, not the lowest possible note, as any more than the point from which his computations of distance were to be made. As such, it has been distinguished in later times by the name G, and designated by the Greek letter Gamma, the Greek G, because that is the first letter of the Greek word Gramme, which signifies the starting post for a race, or that point from which the computation of distance was measured. In consequence of this, and the circumstance of the syllable ut, which Guido took from a Latin hymn and added to this note, to distinguish it, the whole musical scale is now frequently termed the gamut, ut, re, mi, fa, sol, la, La, Sol, Fa, Mi, Re, Ut, what we would now call Do in our modern usage.
But whoever was the inventor of the cliffs, he, she or they, seems to have proceeded on the following ideas. He appears to have considered the scale as, at that time, consisting of two octaves and five notes or twenty notes in the whole, and probably contemplating only the three different pitches of voice in full-grown men, young men and boys, he determined to distribute the scale into three parts. For that purpose, he took a stave of four lines for each, which would afford lines and spaces sufficient in each for seven notes. The whole compass of musical sounds. <laughs> 